In this video, I want to go through making a virtual box in Ubuntu and installing Windows 10 to it. You obviously would want to uh, have some Windows only software that you would be able to run in Linux, and this is a great and convenient way to be able to, uh, to accomplish that. So before you get started, you need to go into the BIOS of your computer, and this sounds a lot harder than it actually is, but go into the BIOS and turn virtualization settings to be active. Here's a few examples. Um, you just want to make sure that virtualization technology or virtualization of hardware or you know VT, whatever it is, um, is activated and that allows you to run a virtual machine. Alright, let's move on to download the VirtualBox. I'm on virtualbox.org and uh, this is where you can go to download some software. So um, if you go to the download section, the first thing that'll pick up is the extension pack. Right here it says all supported platforms. So click on that link and download those files. And then up here we go to Linux distributions because I am running Ubuntu. And I'm running 18.04, so we'll select this one. And I'm gonna say open file. And from here, we'll install. Okay, with that installed, I can open up the program, and I think uh, both my wife and I's favorite part is this little penguin image here. It's adorable. What we want to do is add a uh, new machine, but it, actually even before that, let's go to Preferences, Extensions, and uh, I've you can see I already pre-installed mine, but you click here, go to wherever you downloaded that extension pack, and uh, install that. With this installed, We'll say OK. We can add in a new machine. Let's go with Windows 10, as that's probably what you'd like to do so that you can run a Windows software inside of Ubuntu. I'm going to call this Windows 10. And notice how smart it is that when I type the 10 in here, it knows that I want Windows version 10. Uh, so we're going to say Next. And this asks how much RAM do we want our system to run on. This is always adjustable in the settings after we do this. I'm going to give it, say, half my system's RAM about. I'm running 32 gigabytes of RAM right now. So that'll be about right. We're going to say next. We'll create a virtual hard disk now. And I always use VirtualBox disk image. And dynamically allocated means that it will... Um, allocate more room as you need it. If you're going to install large files, sometimes when I've tried to make very, very large installs, um, before the install happens, it says there's not enough room on this computer. I don't like running into that problem, so I do a fixed size if I know that I'll put large files on. Uh, we're gonna give Windows uh, maybe something like 20 gigabytes. And you can always uh, just straight type 20 as well. So I type 20, pressed enter, and uh, and now we have uh, Windows 10. Okay, there's a few ways to go about doing this, right? The first one is I can just uh, double click on this to start it up. So now that we're powering on our machine, it asks us where is our startup disk. Uh, to get a startup disk, I suggest going to the Windows website so this is uh, the Windows, I'll put a link in the description, or you can remind me to put a link in the description, one of the two, uh, where you can select an edition of Windows 10, then you can select uh, a language, uh, for me that's English, and then you can select a 32 or 64 uh, bit, and then download the image, right? Pretty easy. So once you have that, um, you just add and then go to whatever file that you uh, have that disk image in. Another way of doing this, if I cancel this and power down the machine, if for some reason that method of finding the uh, install files doesn't work, you can also go to settings and we'll go to storage. You can see this empty disk right here. And uh, we can choose or create a virtual disk by adding it. And actually my Windows is in my download section, so we'll open that. So there's our disk, we choose that. <clears throat> and I say okay. 
right? And that just assigns a place for the machine to look for the install and operating system files when I power it up. So I double click on this to power it up. And now we'll look at the location that I specified for a system to boot up with. And there it is, it's found the windows and uh, we are booting up the uh, setup side of windows now. Uh, these settings are great. We're gonna say install now. And I go with a custom install when um, making windows into a virtual machine. So uh, you can enter a product key if you own a product key. Otherwise, you can say, I don't have a product key. And uh, Windows 10 Pro is a lot of what the uh, workstations come on, right? My workstation originally came with Windows 10 Pro. You can also do Windows 10 Home, which I'm going to do in this case because I'm not going to install any heavy or crazy software on it. I'm going to accept the terms and continue. And let's go with Custom. And this is the drive that we set apart with our 20 gigabytes earlier on. So we just say Next. And now we are installing. And uh, this will restart several times. We'll just have to wait it through until uh, we're all ready to go. The best part about the uh, install here is making Cortana be quiet. Now, when she's done talking, uh, we're going to set this up just like any other system out of the factory, right? So yeah, I don't think you need any help with uh, configuring some of these settings. Just make it how you want, and I'll see you when we get to the desktop. And here we are at the desktop. I'm going to not make my PC discoverable. <laughs> and uh, the graphics actually look surprisingly good here. Uh, often you'll have something that's a little bit out of uh, sync or you know scaled, which I think we're going to come across pretty soon here. So the first thing is I may want to change my view. I may want to full screen this. And I can full screen it here. You'll notice I have a bunch of space around my screen. And I can try to scale this. So to change my view, um, I hold, there's a left and a right control on the keyboard. The right control is to run VirtualBox commands. And the left control is to run commands inside of VirtualBox and inside of your Linux system. So with VirtualBox being active, I press right control and C, like Charlie, and it rescales my system here. I hold right control and C, and it scales my system to this sort of, um, you know, filled up my screen kind of mode with virtual box options up here. If I want to go absolute full screen, I do right control and F, and now it's like Windows is the entire monitor. Uh, there is a problem though because you're seeing all this blank space and we would like to have this space uh, be filled up. So as I toggle through my views here, uh, if you recall those VirtualBox add-ins that we installed into VirtualBox, this is where they come into play. We're going to choose Devices, Insert, Guest Images, Add-on CD. And then I can go into my Windows Explorer here. And I'm going to put in this PC. There it is, right? There's our uh, guest additions. And I'm going to install VirtualBox additions here. And we want to run this. install
and we'll manually reboot later. I also want to install this by 64. Oh wait, I think this is actually for the 32-bit version. Let's find out. Let's manually reboot later, and I believe this is for the 32-bit that's not applicable here, but let's give it a try. Yep, so uh, we've installed those two things, and believe it or not, that is actually going to be taking care of this uh, weird scale extra space that we've got. So if I go right control F, uh, we'll, we won't see this black space a little bit after our next reboot. It'll take some time to go in, I think. Uh, the other thing is, if I minimize this, how do I get files uh, to and from my machines, right? So if I make a new text document, you can see my text document here. If I try to drag and drop, it kind of sticks in my window. And likewise, uh, inside of Linux. So, oh, and... Uh, yeah, you can see we still have those weird scaled graphics when we go full screen. Um, what do we do here? Well, let's shut down. Now I'm going to go into the settings of my Windows 10 machine. And we're going to head on down to System. You can see that's our RAM. For a processor, we can speed it up. I can run four of my eight uh, processors on that um, and under display that looks good storage is good but we want to come all the way down to shared folders and this is one way that I can start um, sharing files I can enter a folder path in my systems like slash home and that's my home folder in Linux where I can put whatever Linux folder path that I want to in here and of course, if anyone's unaware, I can just open up a window, go to the folder that I want, and uh, hit Control L, and it can uh, give me my folder path, right? So I can do my mount point here, or something like Y colon, and then the when I fire up Windows, it'll look like the Y drive. But one important thing that I missed, so I'm actually gonna highlight this and edit, is I want to make sure that I auto mount this. So that's one way. Another thing that I can do, um, looks like we have a uh, USB enabled. Let's go to general and advanced, and let's do a bi-directional shared clipboard and a bi-directional drag and drop. So my clipboard works in Linux now with control C, control V, and I can drag and drop in both directions. Let's uh, power this machine on again. All right, we're gonna sign in here. Now as we sign in, the guest extensions that we installed are going to take effect uh, kind of soon, and you'll start to see my window and graphics and everything update uh, to where they look like a genuine Windows system and not some sort of weirdly scaled uh, thing that we're looking at right now. If I hit right control F to go on a full screen, there it goes. Uh, it just kicked in and now we have our proper graphics. Uh, from here, you can just treat this like a normal system. You always exit by shutting down. So you can power off your machine here. Or, of course, you can scale your view and right control C. And uh, when you go to exit here, you can make sure that you power off your machine. Uh, so treat this like a, a regular Windows machine. Uh, and uh, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.